So uh, welcome to this uh, workshop. Hopefully everyone can hear me. So I'm going to start off with the MS4 program. I think most people on this call are familiar with it. It stands for the Municipal Separate Stormwater System Program. Uh, basically, the Clean Water Act required all states to come up with a plan to identify uh, impaired or polluted streams and come up with a program for improving those streams. In Pennsylvania, it's called the MS4 program managed by the Department of Environmental Protection. It has a lot of different practices, basically to deal with stormwater coming from imper permeable surfaces uh, and the pollution that results from that. Today, we're gonna focus on three of the six measures um, that are that are in that MS4 plan. So if you're on this call, most likely your municipality has a stream that is impaired and your municipality has an MS4 plan. And um, as part of that plan, you have to write a plan and you have to write a report. We're gonna get to the report annually. So in the MS4 program, there are six minimum control measures we're gonna address one, two, and six. So we're gonna address public education and outreach on stormwater impacts. So your municipality is required to do that. Have a plan to educate the public and reach out to them. You have to have a method for public involvement and participation. It could be as simple as a public meeting with your MS4 plan discussed. And then the last one is called good housekeeping or pollution prevention. It's really internal to your municipality. So is your public works yard managing salt and oils properly, but also do you have a training program to train your staff? So right off the bat, because you're here at this workshop, you should be counting this webinar as in-house training that you can put on next year's MS4 report that you've staff has participated in training. So the CWMP is the Christina Watersheds Municipal Partnership. It was formed over 10 years ago with the MS4 program, basically to help municipalities meet the MS4 requirements. A lot of it early on was technical assistance, mapping, calculations of stormwater pollution, runoff, and planning projects. We are um, represent the three watersheds that make up the Christina uh, basin uh, in Chester County. So Brandywine Creek, Red Clay Creek, and White Clay Creek. Our CWNP planning team is in the blue on this um, chart. So it includes a number of conservation organizations, uh, some individuals that work in watersheds. On the left side, we are a liaison to the Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Protection, US EPA, the uh, Natural Resource Conservation Service and other government regulatory programs. And then we partner with those watershed organizations. So that's how we share this information. So there's a whole team that works on this together with you. And then University of Delaware and University of Pennsylvania uh, are also involved in that. So pre-pandemic, um, I remember it well because it was February of 2020. We held a meeting in person and we asked municipalities, what can we do to serve you better with MS4? And we had uh, group meetings. And the one thing that we're going to talk about today was municipalities looked at those MS4 requirements and said, boy, that's a lot of work for us to maintain a stormwater page, um, know what resources to share with our residents and plan activities. Can't you help us with that? And um, we came up with the idea of why don't we develop a web page that has stormwater resources that are specific to Chester County and make that available to everyone. And so that's what we wanna share with you today is that resource. Um, it's available for you to use. We hope that you use it. We put effort into it. And so that's what we're gonna to address today is how you can use this web page and the resources there. Um, the first part of the web page, um, and let's launch the next poll, Andrew, um, cause this has to do with what parts you might be using now. I 
And so um, while Andrew launches the poll, this is the, um, the poll number two. This is the landing page for CWMP.org. Can you all uh, see the developed poll? and launched in 2021? Hold on. Oh, I see. No, oh, there it is. Oh, wait, that's, yep. that's can you, I see poll can one. You pull it up? Can you see that? I don't see it. Hmm. Let me see if I can find it. Huh. Okay, I'll launch it. Here I can see it. It doesn't give me the option, I guess, to launch. Maybe I can't launch this one. Well, we may not launch it. I have it, but the launch option is um, grayed out. Odd. It says it's already been launched. Hmm. We have to end the other poll, maybe. Okay. Hold on. Let me try. Stop sharing. There we go. I had to end the other one. Sorry, everybody. So this is a poll. We just want to know what are the resources that you might already be using? Um, do, you, do you have a newsletter that, that you can utilize to share materials? That's a really easy one. Do you have a bulletin board display? guys use social media. Great. So we're going to talk about some of the resources you can share on these uh, outlets. Um, the one I thought about when I visit municipal buildings is the stormwater bulletin board or even just a simple display inside your office. Um, kind of reminds me of uh, Toy Story. I think it was, if you don't have one, get one, right? If you don't have a partner, get one. A real easy way to satisfy one of your stormwater requirements is have some printed material out. Uh, in your municipal building. And we're going to provide you some flyers today that you can uh, insert your name and uh, voila, you have your own customized flyer on there. I think we've stopped getting um, new um, responses. So, uh, Brian, I'm going to end the poll if that's okay. Okay, that sounds great. So it looks like uh, three quarters of the municipalities have a newsletter. A little less than half have a display. So I would say that's an easy task to take care of that you could put in next year's report. And 80% have social media accounts. So that's another easy way to share information. All right, so what I'd like to do now is take you to, I'm going to, um, let's pull the poll down and I'm going to, uh, I'm going to share this uh, actual website so you can see the um, CWMP for yourself. Okay. Can everyone see the, uh, can you see that, Andrew, the homepage for CWMP.org? Yes, I see it. Great. So this is the homepage for uh, CWMP. And what I want to focus on are these green buttons and the blue button. These are all available to the general public without a password. 
So anyone can see these resources. The first one is about CWMP. And uh, these are the planning team members. So Brandywine, us, Chester County Water Resource Authority, Got Perspectives, the Conservation District, Stroud Water Research, Brandywine Conservancy, David Ross, uh, retired from Bryn Mawr College, White Clay Wild and Scenic, University of Delaware. I need to swap out U University of Maryland with Penn. I'll have to put Penn in there. There, our new partner is Penn Center, and then USGS. So that's a little bit about us. Um, but most importantly, this is a place where homeowners, residents can get information. So the first tab is homeowners. And on this tab, we have provided information to give homeowners information on how they can improve stormwater at their home. So things like rain gardens, how to use pesticides, smart, uh, rooftop, managing rooftop runoff, a very common problem at most homes. Tree planning is one of the best practices you can do. Permeable pavement, you name it. There's a variety of different things in here that they can click on and get information. So we have a tab for homeowners. Similarly, we made a tab for farmers. So there's a whole set of practices that farmers can do or large landowners. And uh, this could be how to do a conservation plan with the conservation district. This is basically a plan on how to manage your land to uh, control stormwater. If you have a certain number of livestock, you might be required to have a nutrient management program. So keeping that manure out of our streams. Uh, if you're a mushroom farm, there's a requirement. Um, and then there's a lot of funding for these different practices. So actually just today, I was on a site where we are fencing cows out of the stream, like this photograph. So, and that project is being funded entirely by a grant through some of the CWMP partners. So really good resources here. The other one is building projects. So if one of your residents, this is not so much for developers, but more so for residents. If you're gonna add a garage, a pool, if you wanna expand your parking area or driveways, you may be required to do stormwater management depending on the size of what you're adding. So this walks you through why you need to do that. What are the things you need to do? Um, of course, every municipality has its own um, requirement. So you're going to have to check in with your municipality, but it really kind of walks the homeowner through what are the things they need to do. So this is a really great tab for that. And then um, I guess for the stormwater sort of geeks out there, if you want to know what is the stormwater program, why does it exist, we put that information here. So, and we've actually made it, um, what does a homeowner need to know? What might a farm or farmer want to know, what do municipalities want to know. This kind of gives you the background. What is the program? Why does it exist? How does it work? I really suggest this page when you have new staff members or an elected official, this is a great primer into that stormwater program that has real regulations, real requirements your municipality might have to meet. So these are all great tabs that are available to the general public. And then the other thing here is two other resources. This calendar um, is, remember that you need to do a certain number of public participation education activities. Well, this calendar lists stormwater webinars, workshops, uh, litter cleanups, tree plantings on this calendar. Um, and you can see, you can click through different days by the month. The workshops are sometimes presented by uh, Penn State Extension one of our partners. And so, um, you know, for example, if you'll click on September 13, there's a webinar about cover crops for farmers. So it's a webinar um, by Penn State Extension on why and how you might wanna put in cover crops. Uh, most of these resources are free and these are things you can share with your residents. Um, and then further down on the page, let me go back is something I'm gonna talk about a little bit, but P uh, Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Protection wants to, to know that you have a way for residents to report environmental issues, a spill, a broken pipe, an illicit stormwater discharge. We have information on this page, and I have some information that you can share on your page 
so that residents have an easy way to report if they find something. And that is a DEP requirement. So this is the website. Um, and now I'm going to go back and just share with you some of the details on this web page. So to walk you through some of this in a little bit more detail, um, if you registered by 1230 today, I sent you this guide. If you registered after 1230, I'll send this to you. So we have made a guide in Word that walks you through how to use these resources. So everything I'm telling you today is in print. Um, we update it occasionally. So if you want the most recent version, it's on the web page under the partner resource tab. So this guide is going to tell you how to post these different resources, what's available. Um, and I will send this out after the workshop to everybody to make sure you have it. So um, one of the things the guide does is those resources that I just showed you, homeowner, farmer, and building, you can simply on your stormwater page, cut and paste this language and put it right on your web page. It basically says we're a partner, we're a member of CWMP, and as part of that, we wanna share these resources with you and your residents can simply click on these blue um, links and they can go right to our web page. So it saves you from having to post all those resources yourself. You're simply posting a link. We did the same thing with the MS4 program. If you wanna write a paragraph, you can use ours, you can write your own. You can send people directly to that page. Um, the calendar is something um, that I think is really useful for you. I showed it to you earlier. Um, all these, we update it uh, on a regular basis. Um, we will take care of updating it. Probably the easiest thing for you to do is simply post a link to the calendar on your web page. I don't have it on the screen, but in the guide is a language that just says, you know, CWMP offers a calendar of stormwater events. Click here to see what's going on. Um, you could actually embed this calendar on your web page. Um, that would take somebody who understands the web pages. Now, if your organization is like ours, I don't have access to our web page. A staff member updates our web page. So I simply send her stuff. I say, hey, can you pull this down and put this up? And that's probably what you're going to be doing. Whoever manages your web page, you're going to send them these links and you're going to say, can you please post this? Um, so you could choose to embed the calendar right on your page. If you like the way this looks, they don't have to leave the page. And then um, you may want to sparingly add some of these events on your municipal calendar. I don't think you want all CWMP events on your municipal calendar because I'm assuming that's where you post your zoning meetings and your supervisor meetings. But if there's an event that's particularly relevant to your municipality is hosted at your municipality, you may want to post that event on your own web page. So just something to keep an eye out. You can kind of sort through these. You can also view read these easily under table view as well. So um, we hope you use this resource. And then this um, MCM2 is about public participation. So again, the calendar is a good way to do that. Um, some municipalities host your own cleanups and um, tree planting activities. We're happy to host those on CWMP if you want more participants. So if you send that information to me, there's a link on the page where you can do that. Um, you may uh, set up activities at a workshop. And then we're gonna talk a little bit about the annual report. Um, but um, each year, if you were to have it, if you have on your agenda an MS4 plan review and simply inviting your residents to participate is one way to encourage public participation. Now, the next part of the web page is something that's only available to you if your municipality is a cost share member. And I think everyone who signed up is part of a municipality that uh, helps with a cost share to support CWMP. So I thank you for that. And so it's going to ask for this username and password. And I think Andrew is going to put this in the chat. 
Um, so we do have one password and we ask on the honor system, you're welcome to share it with your engineers and your staff, but not those outside of CWMP. Um, but this is so that it gives you access to this tab. And I'm going to now show you all the resources that are available with the password. I noticed that in the um, picture of the login, it, it said CWMP Muni, but it's just CW. Oh, good. So you've got that in the chat? It's in the chat. What's in the chat is correct, yeah. You, your slide was correct, but, but the screenshot of the login was. Okay. So if you go back to our homepage, um, this red tab is where the partner resources are, or you could pull it off the top. And it's gonna walk you through what's here. So we put together a, um, a toolbox of different tools you can use to communicate. And so it's called this right here. When I click on this, some of the resources we have is our annual water ad, um, uh, social media posts, which I'm gonna show you uh, in a minute. So if you have uh, social media, that was actually a downloadable version. Um, these are media posts that you just cut and paste. Uh, we have a number of flyers that you on different stormwater topics. They're available in PDF and Word format. You add your municipality's contact at the bottom, and now you have your own flyer, either in print or PDF form. Um, some of the resources on this tab are more technical in nature, um, not to be that the general public will use, but your staff may want information about PADEP, how they count a stream restoration project towards your goals, some different things there. And then the Pennsylvania Water Environment Association also has a number of toolboxes, flyers, messages. They're a little bit more related to sewers, but you know, still relatable. And then also under this tab are the articles. I missed the articles. Under partner resources, you'll see newsletter articles. And so there are now 11 articles that you can simply cut and paste without copyright and put them in your newsletter. And they're all stormwater topics. So simple things that you can do to um, share with the public. And so I'm going to go back to my PowerPoint and walk through those with you. So once you've signed in, yeah, you're right, Andrew, that's wrong on the screen. I'll have to fix that next time. So um, I just shared with you what so, some of those resources are. I'm going to walk you through them. So years ago, the one thing CWMP did was publish an ad once a year. It's called a stormwater ad. It is um, now printed. Actually, we get eight imprints a year. We run it in the Daily Local and Southern Chester County News. Um, we run it at Celebrate Water Day, which is around March 20th, and then Earth Day, which is around March 22nd. We have all the names of the municipalities who are cost share members. And uh, we now have made this ad show up in print and the online version of those newspapers with live links to cwmp.org. So uh, once we print this ad, I usually share it with the municipalities. You can share the ad, but this is something you should be including in your MS4 report. And you can see that your municipality name will be in here. And you could say, look, as part of CWMP, we disseminated information to residents. So this is something that we do every year. Um, and then the social media post looks something like this. We have it in a Word document, or you could lift it right off the web. It is literally as simple as copying the picture and the text, putting it in Facebook or Instagram and posting it. Um, again, if you're like my organization, I don't post on social media. I send those to a staff member who posts for me, but this is a good way to get information out to homeowners, really simple thing to do. Um, I have a new intern this fall. I'm hoping to write some more social media posts. 
So check back frequently for new ones. We just added two new articles. So we now have 11 articles um, about different stormwater topics. These, um, the only thing we ask is that if you use these, please give credit to the author. If you make significant edits, just ask for our permission. But these are in Word, and you we have the photographs, and you can easily put these right into your whatever your newsletter is. If you've been there in the past, the two new ones are green stormwater infrastructure. And again, because DEP wants more information out there on illicit stormwater discharge, we made an ar article about that. So um, check back. We'll be adding articles over time. And then similarly, we made flyers. So um, the one on the right is a simple flyer here about um, development. Um, no, please be careful that the bottom of the flyer is left blank. So um, there's a place using either Adobe Acrobat uh, Pro or Microsoft Word. You're going to want to enter your municipal information at the bottom of that flyer. So the idea here is to drive them to the web page, but to also uh, tell them who they contact at your municipality on these different issues. So uh, we do hope you use these flyers. If you set up that bulletin board uh, in your municipal building, this is a good place to post those. And then regarding, uh, so an illicit discharge, is basically anything discharged to a stormwater system that drains to a stream or water body that is not composed of stormwater. So when people dump oil or antifreeze down the storm drain, that goes directly to a creek. If you uh, smell foul-smelling water or off-color, like the picture in the right, that stream was gray and kind of a soapy scum and smelled like a sewer, something's wrong, you should report that. If you see a fish kill, um, if you see makeshift pipes um, going from a residence or a building into a swale or ditch or grate, there could be an illicit stormwater discharge, and municipalities should have a way to report that. We actually give you some language here on the left in the guide that you can simply cut and paste into your web page. You can post the article and then you can post this flyer. So this is something that DEP will want to see um, on your page when you do your report. And then, um, so every year, someone at your municipality is submitting a report to DEP. The calendar year for this runs from July 1st, 2022 to June 30th, 2023. And so um, right now that report is due September 30th. So you have till September 30th. So there's a form. Um, the first thing you wanna do is make sure that you document that you're a part of CWMP. So about a month ago, we prepare a report of all the activities we did, of all the ads we posted, the workshops, the public education activities that the partners did. So those, and I'll show you where you can report that. And this, this is just a screenshot of the attendance that CWMP had at a lot of our activities. Um, you should know that DEP wants to know that not only did CWMP offer some activities, but that your municipality did do something specifically for your municipality. So you do need to, to document that. Um, and you can use a lot of these resources to do that. And then one thing that we uh, noted was we did look at all the municipal pages. So we noticed that um, actually a few municipalities, we could not find a stormwater page. So that's a good place to start is to make a stormwater page. Uh, we did notice that in some places, the information was quite old. Um, and we know that because some of the pages had Brandywine Valley Association and Red Clay Valley Association and those names um, went extinct in 2015 when we merged to become Brandywine Red Clay. So it's time to update that page. And then the links are always risky. So you've got to test the links. So sometimes the links change over time. So a simple thing you could do is maybe twice a year, go on your stormwater page, 
update it and check everything. So I'm going to go through some things specific in your report that you can include in this year's report. So uh, I simply lifted this out of the DEP form. So under MCM1, Public Education and Outreach, the first BMP is to develop and maintain a, uh, a written education program. So under number five, it says identify plans in the upcoming year of how you're going to update. So in the right column here, I simply made some ideas for you. You could say, next year, we're going to link the calendar, um, CWMP. Next year, we're going to make a bulletin board. Um, whatever that is, uh, you, can, you can actually check two boxes today. You can write in the report that you're going to do these things, and then you can actually do them and report it in next year's report. Um, BMP number three asks you to publish. This is a pretty low bar. Publish at least one item a year uh, in your stormwater management program. So um, number two, all you have to do is list the updates that you did, what you posted. Uh, practice number five is uh, make a goal for next year. So again, you could say, we're going to do two social media posts. We're going to publish articles in two newsletters. We're going to post two flyers. Whatever you want to do, you can check those boxes today uh, using the guide and what you learned here at the workshop. Um, they're also asking that you distribute materials to new audiences. And again, this is a place you can say, okay, we're going to we're going to propose a calendar. We're going to uh, list what have you. Then there's a section on public involvement and participation. They want you to regularly solicit public uh, participation and report those instances. So this is under number two, is where you want to list um, that you participate in CWMP. So um, you're allowed to say that we partner with this organization or that organization to help us meet this goal. If you have other partnerships, list them here. And then again, this is where the calendar is great because there's a lot of organizations that offer workshops that you don't have to, that you can simply promote. Uh, I will say about the calendar as well, that you may see, for example, I noticed that I think it was Kennett Township, we sent information about um, Temple University's doing a study on well safety, well water quality, and um, they must realize that a lot of their residents are on wells, and they put that right on their webpage. If you want to participate in a Temple University study on wells and actually receive some free equipment, uh, sign up there. So you may pull things off the calendar that you say, oh, this is especially relevant to my residents. And then under number three, it asks you to report activities um, in which members participated. So uh, make sure that if you hosted a cleanup or a tree planting, or sometimes other partners like Brandywine Red Clay Alliance, we do a red clay cleanup and a Brandywine cleanup. If that occurred in your municipality, you should take credit for it. If you help promote it, you should take credit for it. So this is where you report those things. And then the final one is MCM6, which has to do with pollution um, prevention and good housekeeping. So again, by participating in these workshops, you can list, uh, you can identify that your staff was trained. So coming up soon, on October 3rd, I just sent out an announcement for a lawn to meadow workshop. Last year, that filled pretty quickly with 50 slots. We're offering the workshop again. Um, so this is for large landowners or municipalities who want to convert lawn to meadow. We're going to be scheduling, oops, apologize. We're going to be scheduling Master Watershed Stewards has a program called Watershed Friendly Yards Certification. So this is a sign. This is a certification that homeowners can get by doing certain practices. So we'll be offering that workshop this fall. Last winter, we brought back our, our elected official breakfast meeting because municipalities told us we want you to talk to our elected officials. They're the decision makers. So we'll be offering a breakfast meeting again in January. And then um, last June, we offered a stormwater infrastructure maintenance workshop for public staff that filled with 30 people. So we're going to offer it again. And we'll be offering more of these workshops. 
And um, under that partner resources tab, you'll see that many of these workshops are uh, recorded. Some of the PowerPoints are saved. Um, you can find that um, other workshops that and trainings that you can use to train your staff or your volunteers, your residents. Um, so those are all available to you on that tab. And then I'm just going to let you know while you're looking around on the partner resource tab, um, there are other resources that are available to you. Um, actually, not on the tab, but I do send out a newsletter. I've converted it now to an email newsletter. So I do occasionally, I don't do more than six a year, but I do email, hey, there's a grant coming up. There's a workshop you might be interested in. So keep an eye out for those. Those newsletters are really meant for municipal staff. They aren't written for the general public, although there might be items in there you want to share with the general public, but um, it's more intended for people who are implementing the MS4 program. There is a tab on grants. So um, if you click on that tab under partner resources, it has a list of grants, what they fund, when their deadlines are, and the links. So some really good resources there for municipalities. And it, uh, several other things. So, um, and then with that, that's the end of my presentation on what's available to you. As I promised, we were done well under an hour. So I'm going to give a chance, Andrew, for any questions. Uh, sure, if you wanted to 